I'm Dr. Tom Mather, the Tick Guy from the University of Rhode Island. Take it from the Tick Guy. One little episode is all it takes to get a tick. So these are the male and female stages of black-legged ticks. Also, people know them as deer ticks. And they're really distinctive in that they have this sort of black patch in the front, and that's called the scutum. But then the back part of their body is sort of an orangey red, very striking looking when you look at it very closely. Um, yes, they do have black legs as well, but the more important thing is that the scutum, this patch of black on the front end, is um, sort of oval shaped and the back end of the tick is reddish. So that makes that a black legged tick. And one of the things that I've learned is people, when they're looking at a tiny little tick like this, they don't exactly know whether they're looking at the top or the bottom side. So on the bottom side of a tick, you'll see that the legs sort of are attached, but you don't see that scutum. If you can't see the scutum, then it's harder to know exactly because different ticks have different things on their scutums. And so you want to always look at the top side of the tick first um, if you're trying to figure out what kind of tick it is because that holds most of the identifying clues. Um, and it's really about the scutum, the length of the mouth part. You can see if you look really carefully here, this one has a very longer and straight mouse part sticking out the front end. Some of the ticks have shorter and um, will even have one that has a triangular shaped um, mouse part. So those three things, if you just remember that, you can try and figure out what kind of tick you've encountered. These adult female black-legged ticks in the Northeast, the Middle Atlantic States, and the upper Midwest, about half of them, half of them are carrying the Lyme disease germ in nature. And so they're bigger than the nymphal stage ticks that people get in the springtime. So they're easier to see maybe, um, but they're definitely riskier um, because, you know, just think there's two ticks right there. One of them likely is carrying the Lyme disease germ and the other maybe not. So that's a very, very high level of risk. So black-legged ticks are the carriers of the Lyme disease germ, but they also um, carry one called babesiosis, one called anaplasmosis, one called um, hard tick relapsing fever, um, and are also the transmitters of the Powassan virus. Now those last two, relapsing fever and Powassan virus, are much, much less common in these ticks, but the, the Lyme disease germ in these adult stage ticks, about 50% of them, one out of two, is carrying the Lyme disease germ. So that makes them particularly risky. Yeah, the black-legged ticks are probably the most common tick in the Northeast U.S., the Mid-Atlantic U.S., down past Washington, D.C., then their numbers start to um, be a little bit less abundant. And also in the upper Midwest, um, probably the most common tick. And the adult female stage and the male as well, um, they do one other weird thing for people. Most people think everything that bites is generally going to die and not bother you after the first frost. But that's exactly when the season for adult stage black-legged ticks begins. So they come out after the first frost, maybe even the end of September into the first part of October. And um, they just sort of all of a sudden appear on the, in, on the landscape and on you. Um, when you're least expecting it, you think tick season should be over, but that's, that's the time that these ticks really come out in great abundance. There are ticks all across America, all across the world, but there are different types of ticks. Different ticks transmit different germs, and that's why it's so important to be able to determine what type of tick it is. You can know what risk you're at if you know what type of tick it is. We have resources on Tick Encounter that show the types of ticks and where they, where they might be found, but you can always take a clear picture of your tick and for free send it to tick spotters 
and we'll identify it for you and tell you what germs that you might get from that tick. So different ticks transmit different germs. Make sure you know what type of tick that you've encountered.